Uh, so, um, I'll be, sh I'll, I'll share the agenda. It will be easier if I manage to do so. Okay. And I guess I have wrong screen shared. Yeah, wrong share, wrong screen. Okay. Um, so, do you see the agenda? Um, it's loading. Okay. Okay, I can see it now. Uh, so for the, let's say, the last two months, we've, we've been talking about doing an upcoming release. Mm -hmm. So I guess now is the time to plan for the bug bash, the final bug bash. So yeah. uh, I think you... At start, you started to prepare it, Eugene? Yeah, so let me just link it here. Um, Johnson and I started working on some scenarios. So let me just put that here. And um, basically, if you look at it, we have one scenario on validating the configuration level resource with debug echo, and then another one to test um, some on this discovery handler filtering um, with either you know the IP addresses or the scopes or yeah, and then UUID filtering. Um, and then scenario C will test the credential passing, um, but we are still, I guess, waiting on one more PR for that, which is um, passing the credential to the broker so we can do like a full end-to-end -end test of that. Um, but yeah, once that PR is in, this should be good. And then I also wanted to do like a documentation walkthrough as well to make sure that um, we're not missing anything. Yeah, I did a, a pass on the documentation work through or well on the documentation and I created a couple of issues for sure. this. Um, then I'll go back here. Uh, so how do we want to do for the bug bash, I guess? the same method as last time we we set uh, some kind of uh, deadline for the bug bash and we try to get everything in it uh, asynchronously I guess yeah I think that would be great um yeah do, do the scenarios look good to you like is there anything else that you think we should add um well I don't think there's anything noteworthy that we did during the during that release cycle that requires a specific scenario. So okay, sounds good. Then maybe uh maybe when Kate's here, uh Ms. Johnson, I think we're still, are we still waiting on that PR on each? Yeah, so um, the PR for OnBIF uh, sample broker is still pending for review. Mm -hmm. I have uh, addressed all uh, comments and then um, that Brian raised some uh, question in the PR, but um, I didn't see any further response um, the, in the past two weeks. 
um, and all the uh, uh, comment already addressed. Uh, yeah, and I also push some document uh, update PR for the UID filter and also the uh, secret um, the dis discover properties for agent and also how the OnVIF discovery handler and broker consume the secret information. So they are all, um, I think there are three uh, two PRs in the doc document repro uh, related to the the new feature added. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I can also yeah look over some of these docs and then maybe Nicholas or Andrew can also take a look and we can merge them for the next release. Uh, yes. For the PR, it's the one that is in C sharp that is waiting. So I won't be of much help for this one, but yeah. Um, then the next item, because I don't think there's anything left on to say on the bug bash. Oh, maybe the due date that we set, I guess we can say, well, we are on September 5th. I guess we can let, say, two or three weeks back bash, to be sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so it goes uh, as a deadline by the 26th of September. So beginning of, yeah, end of September, we, we can... We can cut the release, I think. Okay. Should we chart it? Um, yeah, I guess if we can get the PR in by like this week, uh, maybe yeah, we can say by the end of the 22nd week or like the week of, yeah, 18 to 20. The second. Would that yeah, work? That's, that's a, a good, a good um, end date for for the for the bug bash. Then it gives us kind of a a full week to redo a, a release <laughs> and yeah. uh, have this before next meeting. Yeah, I agree. All right, I'm gonna say. Uh, so next item is a uh, build system issue and uh, that's something I raised in the uh, the update of uh, tonic and prost uh PR and there's well the fact is uh we use cross to build the rust artifacts uh it's a tool that helps uh to cr that helps for cross compilation for the different architecture we provide artifacts for mm -hmm. and uh, this tool uses uh, Docker images with the all the tool chains needed. And these are based on, uh, I think it's 18.04 Ubuntu. So it's quite outdated. And they plan for, well, uh, like three months ago, they were late for a new release where they plan to go to 2004. Uh, but that is not enough if we want to upgrade Prost because uh, we would need uh, at least 2204. So I don't think we, well, they are quite late in their release schedule and they don't seem to 
well, to have much momentum around these issues. So uh, I tried to see if we could get rid of cross and just build in another in another way. Uh, so I asked on the Slack channel to see if uh, some people had ideas in, on how we could build. And one is that raised was using uh, just plain Docker build X. So that way you we you can cross com well it's not cross compilation then it's full, it's just emulation and com native compila compilation with the emulated uh, image uh, and that's slow really slow and that raised another issue is that w I have been unable to build that way for. Arm very arm seven, so uh, I tried another way using uh, open open build service. So that's uh, the same thing that is used now by upstream Kubernetes. Uh, that is uh, an open SUSE service, and I well, it was way faster to build because uh, there are some ARM native builders, but still I have been unable to build for ARM 7. Um, so the real issue here is we, well, I, we would need to upgrade uh, our dependencies. So we need to find how we can circumvent the issue with the outdated cross images. So we have to choose some way to, to do so. And well, we have to make a decision somehow on what we want what we want to do, uh, especially here for ARM7, because I've been unable to build uh, an image for, for this. So my guess is, do we really care about ARM7 since it's, uh, as far as I know, it's being deprecated in upstream Kubernetes. So I don't know if we still want to uh, support ARM7. So these are the kind of question that that rose from this. So if you have any comments or anything on on this as well. Yeah, thanks for looking into this. Um, I am not like super familiar with ARM7 and I don't think I've seen it appear a lot, you know, in the community as well, but I'm curious if you have, um, but yeah, I think like you said, it is going to be deprecated. So I'm not sure how important it is for us to prioritize it. So without taking ARM7 into account, I've been able to uh, build artifacts using either OBS or plain Docker build X. Uh, and just the difference between the two is time for building. So basically it took around uh, 10 to 15 minutes to build uh, on OBS and it took around uh, two hour, I think, for BuildX. So that's the kind of time difference. So uh, the main issue with OBS is that it's not integrated in GitHub Actions. So it's some kind of external service. Uh, so it's not uh, as straightforward as Docker Build X for uh, integrating into a, our workflow. Nice.
So is there any difference um if I uh if a developer um want to build it locally? So is that like a which one is easier or is like a relative the same? Um if I want to set up the to build cross build locally. Uh, locally for the well it won't change anything if you want to uh, build for your own architecture because it will still be a cargo build uh, if you want to build for another architecture uh, I guess the docker build X is easier uh, because the OBS relies on uh, external builders and everything so it's kind of a full building platform in fact In the end, it's the same thing that is being done. It's spawning a, some kind of virtual machine that with the right architecture or mm -hmm. using a native uh, architecture builder and then doing a, a cargo build. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess, yeah, the build X method is more straightforward if you want to do it at home. I'd say. Um, for the details, uh, the main thing that is wrong with the old Ubuntu image from Cross is that we don't have a recent enough um, protobuf compiler and that uh, updating Prost uh, makes that we need that compiler uh, be, to be installed on the system. While in current Prost version, they embedded uh, the binary in, in, their, in the crate. So we, they changed that because it raises issue for them. And it raises issue for us. <laughs> so what do we do then? I make, I can create an issue if we want to discuss that further or there's still the, the thread on the Slack channel. Uh, that is available so if we want to have more, I'd say, quicker discussion about about this. Um, yeah, I think let's keep the discussion. Discussion going on the thread, but I think it's put that on the action. I okay. Um, but then I'll create uh, an issue to track the decision and still point to the thread. So this way we'll be, we, we, we will be sure that we don't lose the information. Yep. Um, next item is, uh, well, a quick review of all the proposal we have currently open. That's something we don't do usually, but I think it's still needed. Uh, so I'll go to all the PRs that are currently on Acridocs. Um, uh, can you read it or is do I need to zoom up? Yeah, I can read it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so all the proposal we have, um, well, this one for arbitrary broker resource type, this one for status fields, uh, this one for MQTT discovery handler, and this one for the array mode. Um, I guess that's uh, all. Oh, no, there's the here. This one is a proposal as well. And that's it. So we'll start with the oldest one. Uh, there's this one 
that is integrating external device inventory proposal draft. Okay, that's a draft. Uh, it seems to be going from quite a long time. It's a year old now. Um, do you know if someone is still working on this one or it's, if it's uh, just waiting for review or? Um, I'm not sure. I can reach out to Leo to see if um, he's still working on this. Um, but yeah, I haven't heard about this in a while and I don't super remember exactly what this is. I think we have a um, recording somewhere uh, from the meetings of the demo. Um, but yeah, maybe we can circle back off this. And the next one is one I created that is about creating uh, arbitrary resources from as broker. So the idea is uh, currently we can create a pod or a job uh, as a broker, um, say resource and or service as well. And the idea here is to be able to create any set of resource as a broker. So it's kind of a big change to the model because it um, it creates, uh, well, you have to find a way to, well, I display it, it will be easier. Okay, so uh, you have to find a way to display all the, well, to describe all the resources you want to create. So some kind of list of resources. And we have some resources that are created at instance level. So per instance, and there we have some that are created at configuration level, basically the configuration service. And so the idea here is to have some kind of, uh, say, generic way of describing all these uh, resources. So it's, it's in one way it's become it's easier to describe because you describe the whole uh, resource, and in another way uh, it's more verbose from what we have now. But it allows to well create multiple pods from uh, for a single instance, or it also allows to create uh, things we can't create for now, like, uh, say, virtual machines or um, other CRDs that are wanted because, well, we want to, uh, I had Shifu in mind, that is uh, some kind of, uh, some CNCF project. Uh, that allows to uh, expose um, devices through a REST API. So you have to create the device uh, resource so it gets exposed and this kind of things. So I don't know if you, if uh, I think someone made a comment. Uh, no, there's no comments on the on this proposal. So that's quite a big change, and it would allow a lot of things, but it's quite an extensive change, though. I think you were interested, Eugene or Johnson. I don't remember by this one. So um, I got a request about adding a, a notation. So I think this one will help to solve that issue. Um, I heard about that um, configuration table resource um, um, to to support configuration table resource in um, using this proposal. I just wonder, say, um, 
to is it really necessary or for configuration resource that we can just um leverage the um existing native um like a deployment or replica sets or those kind of native Kubernetes resource to deploy the workflow? Uh, I don't know because for some, well, for the service, for example, uh, the agent, uh, well, the controller currently uh, add all the instances to it, to that service uh, as endpoints, if I remember correctly. Uh, so there might be some uh, res configuration level resources that would be modif well, there will be only one created, but they would be modified for every instance detected. So for example, uh, let's say a, a config map with a list of the detected uh, devices or something similar. So I guess we still have this uh, templating thing that w that can come with this. So uh, because uh, for this you had we have to kind of expand the templating we currently do. Uh, currently we only have the placeholder uh, thing, and here we need to have more kind of. Uh, variables to expand. So maybe we could have uh, some some variables that would be uh, re repeated for every instance. But yeah, I'm not sure the configuration uh, level resources are, I don't know if they are that much used. Uh, so I'm not sure. I just didn't want to uh, lose features from what we have now. Uh, yes, Kate. Hey, everyone. Um, so I think this is awesome. And I think this came about in part because we were curious, like you were saying, of creating um, other custom resources beyond instances upon discovery to kick off workflows for other Kubernetes projects, like you were saying, like Shifu or um, anyone that needs like a, a custom resource to dictate a follow-up action. So basically linking our controller with other controllers. One of the questions I have is we have kind of this split logic where the um, Aukri agent responds and creates to discover devices and creates instances. And um, the controller then sees that and creates um, another type of instance. Like if the controller sees that and creates these um, instance broker resources and then also configuration broker resources. So I guess I just want to clarify that all of this implementation will likely take place in the controller. And um, my follow-up to that is how useful do people find the controller today? Like, is that an essential part of Aukri that people see? And um, if so, then that's awesome. I was also curious if we anticipate people using the controller less and less, for example, with the discussion around switching to DRA, like, will the controller be less useful? Um, and then part of that's a question of, like, this is a lot of work. And so how will this be ported to that new DRA world? Yes, uh, for the DRA thing, uh, I'll come to it when uh, I speak about the uh, DRA proposal I've made. Um, uh, but for me, the controller is really, really useful because you don't have something in Kubernetes right now to say, I want uh, some pod or resource to be created for every instance of a device or of, of something. So that's something that doesn't exist right now, as far as I know. So that's something that's really useful to say, for example, uh, I want some workload for every camera, even if there's three on a node, 
if I use, say, uh, uh, some kind of uh, deployment or uh, some kind of, uh, uh, oh, I don't find the words, uh, some kind of uh, daemon set or anything, uh, you, you will just end up with at most one uh, one pod per node, not one per device. So for me, the the, the controller is really really useful. Um, and yeah, this is a lot of work, but I guess that if we well, we'll see in the uh, GRA proposal, uh, but. Uh, that is also a lot of work, but the two can be well kind of combined because they will both uh, need a lot of work in the how we handle things. The only complaint I have with the arbitrary broker resource type is uh, from a security point of view because you have to give the controller the rights to create any resource. That's helpful to hear that perspective of like the controller filling a gap. And I remember I went through an exploration exploration to see if Kata could replace our controller essentially, and they couldn't have like custom CRD uh, driven um, creation of other resources. And so that became a non-option, but Another follow-up question I had was, would a prerequisite or a helpful step to this be to split our configuration into two separate configurations, which is something else that um, I've thought a little bit about is our configuration keeps expanding and what it describes and does. It's both a discovery configuration and a deployment configuration. And one thing I've always wondered about is, wouldn't it be great to unlink those so you could have, and then you could link them to each other through, you know, a, a field within them, but basically you could have your discovery configuration that configures your discovery handler um, and any of your, this would be interesting how it would play well with play with our current um, credential story, but any credentials the discovery handler needs. And then you could have your uh, use configuration that would do this. Like it would have your um, instance broker resources, your configuration broker resources, and any credentials that need to go to those resources in it. Um, and I'm in your thought process around how you go about implementing this with that division of responsibility between two configurations be helpful in any way. And, and another um, caveat to that is I thought it would be helpful because in the traditional operator model in Kubernetes, you have one custom resource and one operator. And instead we have this one custom resource that has two separate operators, the controller and the agent. Uh, in fact, that's something that will come in the DRA prop proposal as well, because uh, we also need to split the configuration in two for, for, for it to work with DRA. Um, so, in fact, then I'll just go to the DRA one because we already spoiled a bit from, for this one. Uh, so, the DRA proposal I made uh, is about the dynamic resource allocation plugin from uh, SIG node. And uh, the main idea there is that instead of uh, having, say, uh, resources linked to a node, uh, you have uh, a pod or a workload that make a resource claim and then that claim get handled by when the scheduler wants to schedule the workload it will uh, ask the uh, the dynamic resource allocation plugin uh, where it can allocate this so the scheduling logic goes back to the plugin so we, for us it would be uh, some kind of controller that is different from the current controller. <laughs> and uh, then you also have the really nice advantage that you have the notification of deallocation. So we don't have to track uh, 
the the allocation using some custom ways. And the other thing is that using this way, we can handle uh, things like configuration level resources way more easily because we don't have to track what node is using what device. We can just schedule the way we want. Uh, so this require quite a bit of change in the API. So the first one I wanted is exactly this, that is uh, splitting the configuration in two. So I had this idea of a resource called, say, broker template or something like that, uh, that would uh, have all the needed information for what to schedule. Um, then to have a discovery configuration resource that is about how we discover and everything in this. Um, and there's something in the dynamic resource allocation is that uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, the word broker is well could be a a, a nice moment to drop that word as well. Yes. Uh, the other uh, thing with uh, dynamic resource allocation is you can give some kind of parameters at the resource class level that is more akin to what we do with the configuration. And you can give uh, a par parameters at the resource claim level. So this would be, this could be used to uh, filter even more on the instances. So this is how I see one be able to uh, target a specific instance for a resource claim or be yeah, able to filter on any kind of parameter given by the discovery handler. And to like add on to that, I think one of the scenarios that we've heard about is I want to use the IP camera by the garage door. So with my understanding with DRA, we can add these properties that basically say like it's here. And then you could, when you go and request a DRA resource, you can say, I want the one that is specifically there. Um, yes. I'm pretty excited about looking at DRA. This is awesome. Yeah. And uh, so on architecture uh, part, it's, well, we need a new controller that will uh, handle the scheduling uh, decision. Uh, we need to rename our current controller because, well, uh, we can't have two controller named controllers. It won't be any useful. Um, then we need to change the way the agent work because, uh, well, we have to. Uh, currently, we do uh, one device plugin per uh, device. In fact, here we would have. Uh, one uh, resource plugin for, well, either per discovery handler or per just one for iCree at all. That is remain to be decided. And uh, I wanted to use that to uh, bump the API version to version one. So move from sh slash v0 to v1. And so I guess this would be the nice moment to kind of get everything we want to change in the resource and just get in there. Uh, so I, I went really quickly on the on the proposal, but yeah, that's the main thing. And uh, the other proposal that were that are open is there's one for uh, MQTT discovery handler. I won't go over this one because, well, it's just a discovery handler. And the one for the status field, that is also an addition to uh, to the resources to add some feedback to the user. So, uh, there's not much to say about this one in detail right now, uh, but you can go see the proposal. Uh, it could be done at the same 
time as well because uh, we still are going to modify the resources for that. Yes, you. Um, a couple questions. Uh, first one is I noticed that this uh, proposal is called DRA mode. Do we want to have backwards compatibility for using the device plugin interface? Is this something where we feel like we could build it in a way where we're able to maintain both of those code bases? Or do we see this switch to Aukri version one as goodbye device plugin interface, hello DRA? And if it is the latter, do we have an understanding of if DRA is more heavyweight in general? Like our um, it's built into Kubernetes. So I, I'm assuming that minified Kubernetes versions support it, um, but I was just wanted to clarify that as well. Uh, yeah, my idea was to say we we do the DRA mode, so both mode in parallel, and then when the, it gets stabilized and uh, it gets uh, supported for every version of Kubernetes and every flavor of Kubernetes we want to support, we can deprecate the other one and remove it. That was my idea for this. That that sounds appropriate to me. Um, I had I said I had other questions and I lost them, so I don't know if you're waiting for the subsequent ones. But oh, I guess one of them was you have all these great proposals. Um, when you're proposing them, are you looking for like a thumbs up, thumbs down, and ready to go implement them, or are you also looking for people to help? implement them like do you need resourcing as well i guess is my question uh usually when i do a proposal it's either that i will do the uh implementation right away or in a later time but if someone wants to get it in in the meantime feel free <laughs> uh but yeah uh i usually intend to for this to be in my roadmap for the future. And uh, the only thing is when I put the, the proposal, usually I try to uh, have a, some kind of discussion as well, especially when it's big uh, architecture decision, because uh, that's thing we usually don't want to come back to after. So it's not something that should be taken on uh, just as, OK, one, one person just said uh, that's good. So that's why I usually wait for more than one feedback for proposals. But yeah. That makes sense. And sorry, if other, I just keep jumping in. So people, please jump in before me if this is too many questions. Um, one other thing I was going to mention is with the device plugin interface, when they put out the docs on it on Kubernetes docs, they had a bunch of reference implementations that I kind of at one point wanted to push to be a part of, but we never did. For DRA, since it's younger, um, I think in parallel with this work, it would be great to get involved with Signode and uh, connect with the Intel folks who led this um, KEP. Um, and um, I know a couple of them and could help loop us in in that way, but to make it so that this big push for our, on our end can help be like a reference implementation for them. Um, and I think that'd be very powerful uh, to both like promote the DRA feature and promote Aukri as being a, like a helmsman for it. Uh, yeah, I already reached to them to ask them some question about uh how it should work for some parts especially for the user feedback part where we want to add status but there's no status fields for dra so if they expect it to them to be handled in another way by the driver of if they wanted to add it to dra so basically i started some kind of discussion on on this but you far now they're more focused on getting this to out of alpha. So they are trying to stabilize things.
how what how much risk is there of us adopting DRA and then DRA not going forward? I mean, there's always some risk, right? My anticipation is that that risk is low. And I'm being, obviously, that's like a scary thing to say, but that the KEP for DRA was like years in the making and they had to push really hard to get it in and its size was like extra, extra large. So their implementation was extra, extra large. And to put that much in and then pull it all out seems quite... Sure. Um, extensive but i also don't know the history of kubernetes proposals well enough to know if that's happened in the past um but i just know third-party third resources to uh um crts <laughs> um was probably a similar size um but also i don't think that i don't think it was all just thrown away it was just um the api was changed in the implementation if i remember remember my history right the implementation was then adapted so even that probably isn't super high risk. It would just be a migration in the future. Nicholas, do you know what their timeline is for going to beta? Uh, they ain't going to beta for either uh, the version that is out in December or the next one. So yeah, that's pretty quick. I'm curious if there's a way to maybe work towards this without being 100% reliant on DRA success. For example, what we were talking about with breaking up the configuration, that seems like that would maybe help with multiple things and also lead us on a path to DRA. Yes, no, that's what I uh, say in the timeline part that there are some things that we don't have to wait for DRA uh, before starting this. So, um, yeah, the breaking the configuration part, and uh, even uh, even if uh, the array doesn't get traction or it just fails, uh, it having a similar architecture to what the array do uh, would be very helpful for uh, all the issues we saw during the implementation of uh, configuration level resources like the possible races between nodes uh, when releasing a, when releasing a, a device or things like that. Um, so I see the time going on. So uh, I'll try to go back to the agenda and the next item is uh, issue triage and uh, I want to start with the something I just saw we left out of the uh, project uh, of the GitHub project is the issues that are on the documentation side. Uh, so there are a few uh, uh, issues on the documentation side. I don't know if they are all known and triaged. So uh, there are a few that I created two weeks ago. Though, so those one are obviously not triaged, but for the old ones, I don't know. So maybe Kate, you know, if they are uh, taken care of or, or anything. So the two last ones. Um, I think the uh, very last one, I don't think has been addressed. It was basically just tell people how to update the Helm chart even more. Um, so I, I don't think that's been addressed. The second to last one, uh, maybe we can click into it. We might be able to close that one if it's a question. Um, I'm not sure if we responded fully to it or not.
that sounds like that's been resolved. So we could probably close that. Are you able to pull all these into our project board for triage? Uh, no. uh, the project board is single repository. So we would have to migrate to the new project style that is org wide. Maybe that's something we should do because if, especially if we want to uh, split the samples and the discovery handlers, we will have more and more uh, repository with issues in them. Uh, so the the other one, the one I created, there's one for the CLA section that is in the documentation that is talking about Microsoft CLA that is obviously not uh, up to date. Um, some links that still point to the Dayslab uh, Acre repository. So I guess this one, because I don't find them in the in in the markdown uh, it's maybe some configuration thing in the git book that is still left to the old URI. um and some clarification needed for some uh some part of the documentation uh so this one i all created them when i uh made the the review of the documentation so for the next release um, I'll go quickly on the projects here because we also have some issue waiting so that we have some time um, okay this one so I'll start with the bottom uh, the version number management and prs is the issue i created uh after the last meeting that was um, where we said we would create an issue to track the fact that we may need to find some better way to handle version numbering uh, especially because uh, we may have some issues when uh, well, I open it, it would be easier. When we uh, do our PRs, we may end up uh, not bumping the version number be by error because it won't complain when merging. Uh, so this is all the ideas that we raised during the, the previous meeting. So I won't go back to them. Uh, I guess this one would be in investigating right now. Uh, there's this one shared device instance should get deleted only when all discovery and load lose track of it. So this one is the, uh, based on the discussion with Kate on the, uh, I guess it was on the status proposal. Uh, so I made a PR for this one. So it's in progress. Uh, dependency license check. Uh, so this one, uh, we I made a quick uh, review of the our dependencies licenses, and we have two uh, two dependencies that are in using uh, licenses that are not uh, approved by CNCF. So we may have to ask for. Um, say, um, uh, the governing board for approval of these dependencies. Uh, so there's the OPC UA that is uh, under MPL license and the uh, mock instance crate that is under zero BSD. So uh, I don't know if someone wants to take the action. Uh, I don't know what is the procedure for that. I think... Uh... Uh Andrew made a good point there on if um, like OPCUA isn't a part of Acri Core, um, maybe we'd be fine 
I think mock instant we sh should be able to remove, I would think, because isn't it just block uh, mocking the instant type? I feel like we might be able to implement a small library in-house that does the equivalent um, to get rid of that one from the agent. Yeah, maybe, or uh, maybe it's just uh, quick because the zero BSD licenses basically do whatever, whatever you want. So I guess it would be it wouldn't be hard to get CNCF to approve this one. But yeah, I don't know for the OPC UA and the specificities of the MPL license. Um, so web PKI, uh, this one is, uh, some kind of, uh, security alert from, uh, that is raised by, I think it's, uh, Actix that is using it or some kind of, uh, so we need to upgrade our dependencies as usual. <laughs> so this come back to the point two of the of the meeting. Uh, we have a bug here. Uh, someone gets uh, an out of memory error in micro K ATS with UDEV video broker. Uh, so it's on Raspberry Pi. Honestly, um, they probably are sound memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Kubernetes so, on a Raspberry Pi is uh interesting is you just don't have enough compute <laughs> even even for lightweight kubernetes right i mean just the the reconciliation loop that you have to do is takes up a good chunk of your resources yeah uh so uh i guess this one will go in investigating this one as well and so I will put this one as in the investigating as well, but if someone one want to take a quick look uh, or can take a quick look on, at this one so that we can give some kind of answer to to the one raising the issue. And for the last one, support annotation. Oh, that's the one you were talking about, uh, uh, Johnson. Yep. The, yeah, yeah, that's the one where I pointed you to the. So I guess this one we can put in backlog because mm -hmm. we have a solution in view, but we are waiting for it. Yep. So we are now out of time, I guess. Uh, do you have any thing to add or to say before we wrap everything up? Uh, maybe well, someone want to. Maybe someone want to. Uh, um, well, get on for the next meeting, take an assignment, so that we don't have to find I one. Traveling at point. that time. Yeah, I can moderate the next meeting. Uh the next meeting is uh, the 3 of October. Yep. October 3rd, yeah. OK, uh, so I guess I would be able to do issue triage. I should be able to attend. I can do notes. OK. Too far in the future for me to know what my schedule is. <laughs> I don't know what it is tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll create the the issue for the build system tomorrow. Uh, and don't hesitate to go on the Slack channel to continue the discussion about the build system issues that was already started there in a thread. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, I don't know if you followed the discussion, Kate, uh, as you 
came here. No, I was just reading the issue though, and I'm really happy we're talking about it because it's quite annoying um, to have like a thousand files to look at because the 999 of them are a version book. Um, but I'll I'll look at them and weigh in. Okay. Uh, so I guess we're going to wrap everything up there. I'll stop sharing. And I guess we, we're done. All right. Thank you, Nicholas. Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.